So Jesus said very difficult times would come because people are going to be madly in love with themselves and their pleasures more than they love the Father. In a family, a mother and father who love each other show forth the glory of God to the children, working through their divisions, schisms, evil imaginations, right? <laughs> Most couples are just making a list on each other and, you know, not resolving any problems at all. So when children, though, see parents that do resolve problems and they don't carry a list with each other, um, it really does a lot to help the family unit. unit and. There is so much sabotage on the very unit of the family now. There's a lot being said about that in particular. There's a lot going on because if the family unit goes downhill in other societies and in history, you know, great is the madness that goes on when the family deteriorates. So, um, and we're living in a day where People are flying in and out of relationships without much thought. Jesus talked about covenant breakers. They don't have any interest in learning how to be their brother's keeper or to be faithful, to love the father who wants us to love the other children, right? And not, you know, live offended. So a child madly in love with themselves in a family is pretty destructive to the family. And selfish parents who are lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God can do a lot to destroy a family too. And let's take a family, for instance, with a mother and father who honor each other. There's actually no greater joy or glory, and that's why Jesus refers to the marriage as Christ in the church. Um, and when they're faithful to each other and they love each other and they're honoring each other, there's great thanksgiving to the parents when the children are, right? They're honoring the father by their love for the children any natural family, a father is very pleased when the children love each other and don't have a list on each other like Cain must have had towards Abel, right? So we're living in a world of selfies and any parents don't want their children to be madly in love with themselves and their pleasures, right? And not be faithful in relationships with the other children just to be self-pleasure seekers. But perilous times are here and Jesus had a lot to say about that, right? Um, we live in a day of flattery too. User-friendly relation relationships that you can ditch when the user-friendliness is gone. People don't understand their own problems enough to be their brother's keeper. So in a world of pleasure-seeking, people are constantly offended whenever their pleasures are not going their way. And you know, it talks about a brother offended. I've had a lot of friends over the last several years talk about the bars of a castle to those that are offended, pleasure seekers have to be offended because they have to make excuses for following after their own desires at the sacrifice of other relationships. So the bars of a castle are big and the people that are offended are at the top of that castle telling everybody what to do and how to do it when they're offended. I've had, I really have had some friends write some really deep stuff about that. So this, world is actually teaching everyone to see everybody else as a narcissist, as an enemy that you need to build walls to protect from your, yourself from, you know, build those safe zones, defend, protect yourself. There's no God in heaven that will protect you. You got to protect yourself. So I've, I've lived out that world. It doesn't work out too well. Um, I'd much rather have God protect me than have to protect myself from people. So I realized years ago that we pass from death unto life when we love, not when we live defensively and offended and keep lists on people. So um, if you've watched many lives over a long period of time too, with spiritual eyes, it's pretty clear to see why loving the Father with all of our heart, mind, and strength is in the best interest and good of everyone. For we seek to do what's right with others, the Father's children, right? When we want the Father's approval and we want to go to heaven, right? We don't want to be nasty to the children. <laughs> For we seek to do what's right with others. And that's what's so sad about children that tell off parents. I mean, there is a natural order to relationships. And when that fails, a lot goes downhill. Um, and, and when we're 
And when we lie and we flatter people to use them, we're actually living in that part of Ephesians 4 that talks about the cunning craftiness of men. And we make everybody pay because we lower the bar on what we're thinking and saying and doing. And we're living in this, I, had, I went and I talked to this phone guy, I couldn't believe how descriptive he was describing wanting to pre protect his children from the sex crazed insanity going on in, in this world with cell phones. and. Everybody and their brothers selling themselves online. It's a, it's a different world for sure. And the very definition of fornication is intimacy without being committed. I'll take a slice of your pie, you take a slice of my pie, but we won't have any deep kind of obligation to be faithful and walk through life together, working through our divisions, schisms, evil imaginations. Um, faithful and love, to put away lying to care for the souls of each other. And we're really living in a day of user-friendly relationships. We've never seen the disintegration of the family unit, unit greater in our time than we live in. It's sweeping across the nation because of, you know, selfishly inclined morals instead of godly inclined morals. Everyone's doing what's right in their own eyes and feeling really good about it and having no clue that that's the problem of what we're watching unfold around us. Everybody's doing what's right in their sight, yeah? Jesus said it would happen. Ungrateful people, heartless, abusive, self-seeking, lovers of pleasures, a world full of unnatural affection, not natural affection, the disrespect for God and others and people being unthankful that their self-life is never full. So the Bible, Jesus said, that vacuum and emptiness would be filled with brutality, where we're slapping people around, reckless and unbridled conceit. Yes, the world's full of narcissists, happy they've never been one, <laughs> and live for your own self-fulfillment. Proud wrath, it's all over the news every single day. We live in a culture that has said, no to God and yes to self-love and self-fulfillment as their highest goal. It's clear to see how broken this world's become. The family's become. Creation is turned upside down. I heard a story about a young girl I, I knew when she was very young and I've been very distanced for her, from her for a long time and she actually called a friend of mine crying and said, there is nothing but usury out in the world there's no love. And I even met a lady that owned the whole town and she goes, oh my gosh, if everything went bad in this town in Colorado, I'd come live with you guys because you're actually proving that Jesus does exist because you're working through divisions, schisms, evil imaginations. And though we're not perfect, this little fold of 40 or 50 people, I think there's little folds like that all over the world that are actually growing together in love forgiving one another, you know, even, man, I listened to a friend talk today too. It was just unbelievable the depth of revelation she has to even love more today than she's ever had before. Um, Bob Dylan wrote a song called Everything's Broken, Everything's Broken, Everything's Going to Hell and Everything's Broken. That was years ago, but, you know, we're watching that play, play out too. People profess to know God, but they don't get their daily bread, their revelation from him. You know, man shall not live by bread alone. Words of life from the God of life to share it. Love defined is feeding the sheep. And there's a lot of starvation going on with people getting no understanding to their soul from the Holy Spirit of truth and giving that away. You know, I was a very bitter, critical victim, and I married somebody who was quite, saw themselves as a victim and was taking that out on women. It was a horrific thing, but you know what I really learned to do is put away bitterness, stop feeling sorry for myself, try to learn life's lessons every day. And you know, the truth is when you love Jesus, you're gonna be slandered, hated, accused, looked down on, you know, People are not going to get along with you well that love pleasure more than the love of God. And we have to realize that that's just the reality of what's going on too. Because there 
are a lot of seducers out there that despise reproof and correction and fall away and help other people fall away from any obligation to have a good spirit by walking after flattery. So I'm going to get this little video going here again. Um, flattery is such a destructive spirit. You know, when I read that one time, I realized, man, that is what destroyed my life more than anything, is the spirit of flattery. I'm going to flatter you to use you, and I will not have honest, open, sincere relationships where I'm willing to actually hear anything. You know, when people become wise in their own conceit, it's impossible to talk to them, really. Um... People that hate correction and avoid self-examination, they lift up their self-love, not the love of God. And they're not team players. And who are the fa who are our fathers, mothers, sisters, brothers, but those who care about doing God's will and who resist living for their belly and worldliness and taking risks by knowing they, what they do that they shouldn't. Satan flattered Eve. That's what he did. And he flattered her to become jealous because she saw herself as being slighted. And Eve became a taker, fearful, unbelieving. She became thankful. One of my friends said, maybe she had several days in that garden talking to Satan over and over until she finally decided to uh, bow down and not care anymore about how she was about to affect Adam. Or the good father said, you know, if you do this, it might kill you. So, and that's really what bitterness is. It, it kills people's spirits. So she got afraid she wasn't going to get what she needed. And she evangelized Adam right out of the garden. And that's what happens with people that get offended. They have to take people out. There's no other option. The, uh, the garden of Adam and Eve is, shows it all. You know, people that fall away will definitely be interested in helping other people fall off the path of life too and fulfill their lusts. That's all you can do. It's like drinking buddies. So this is kind of an interesting scripture. Paul goes in this unbelievable dissertation in Acts 13. So he's, he being filled with the spirit, this apostle, this father of faith, that's what an apostle is. Fathers have the right to make some pretty heavy judgments. And so Paul was making a pretty heavy judgment here in all this dialogue in Acts 13, he says this, Paul, being filled with the Spirit, looked intently at him and said, O oh, full of all deceit and all fraud, you son of the devil, you enemy of all right righteousness, you will not cease from perverting the straight ways of the Lord. And now indeed the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the sun for a time. And, you know, that's kind of deep, too, because Jesus said, if they receive you, they'll receive me and receive him who sent me. He also said, oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I would have gathered you as a hen gathered a chick, their chicks. And you wouldn't receive the prophets and the apostles. And now you've got the blood of all the prophets and apostles throughout time on your hands. You won't see me again. We go blind. We go blind as a bat when we reject the one sent to us. And Jesus said, you won't see me again. You'll be a vagabond loner. You won't see me again until you say to the least of these, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. There's real power in receiving the people that are the weakest. I've learned the most from people that bring out the worst in me. And you know, it is hard when you love people not to get upset and not to be defensive. And even harder when you realize they've kind of numbed out the voice of God in their conscience. And there comes a time when people actually don't want to hear one thing you have to say and you have to leave them alone because they're not interested in the gospel of the kingdom the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and they're rejecting that voice inside of them. And all they can do is pick a fight because of it. You know, the foolishness of man perverts their thinking. They're blind, just like 
just like Paul said here, you go blind, can't see the sun. And in their heart, they fret against anything good. And you know, I just decided to stop living like a victim because what I realized with the serial murder and rapist is that's how he got there. He saw himself as a victim and he had those little con conscience vex vexations one after the next. And that's what this guy was talking about. How do people turn into absolute animals that destroy each other? Because it happens one little thing at a time when we wash our hands from the obligation to love our brother. And you know, that's what's so cool about realizing that I know men that understand the very nature of pornography, of usury, of biting and devouring of the flesh, using people for your own gain. That's what flattery is all about. It's all about usury and it does a lot of harm. It leaves a trail of destruction behind it. And you know, I just don't really have it in me to be much of a flatter anymore. I can't, I can't do it. I can't have pretentious, flattering, <laughs> you know, deceitful, cunning, crafty relationships. And I do realize there's a time when you just have to be quiet until people are ready to know God's voice in their conscience. Because those that have been forgiven much, love much, and I pray that this is a blessing to you. Amen.